Hey guys, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can set up your drawings, your Make 2D Axonometrics plan and section um, in relation to each other, and then you can um, export them all at once in, into Illustrator if you want to bring those forward. But um, I also just wanted to reiterate that this is not a design. Uh, this is not a thoughtful design process, what you're seeing on the screen here. So I, when I show you these tutorials, I am trying to just demonstrate the processes that are being used. But when you're working on your own models and your own iterations, um, it's important that you consider the feedback that you have received in studio and at Descrits um, so that you are carrying forward those, um, those inputs and feedbacks. Uh, so these tutorials are just to show you process. They have nothing to do with design. So I can't say whether this is a good or bad design. And I, uh, I'm not going to show you different testing scenarios that I would do here. I'm just using this as a platform to illustrate how to do these processes. So I just wanted to point that out um, just in case you thought that this was, uh, this was like the level of, of thought to which you should be working. Um, that is not the case. You should be being a lot more thoughtful than Kristen and I are being with these tutorial videos. So with that out of the way, um, I have navigated to my saved view. So I had a set view and I'm just gone to my Northeast ISO view. And if I want to make 2D, I want to demonstrate that process again because Kristen was having a little bit of trouble due to that surface, uh, the tree surface not being correct. So I'm just going to select everything all over again. And you've noticed that I have my pattern on and I'm going to do a make 2D. Once you have saved a view, it will show up here in your make 2D option. So even if you weren't set to this view in the viewport, you could still select it here. So I'm just going to make sure it's on that. And again, all of these options are just what Kristen showed before. But I am going to make sure that I give this a name and I'm going to call it, um, I'm going to call it pattern, I'm going to call it mm, sludge pattern one. Axo Northeast. So I am giving this a layer name because if I envision having multiple studies of this pattern and multiple different patterns, I am going to want a good way to keep these organized. So um, I recommend that you take some time to name your layers. So I'm going to go OK. And I think you're going to see that this works out a lot better than uh, the other Make 2D, it should go a little bit quicker. It still takes some time, but let's see what we end up with. Useful thing in Rhino, it tells you exactly how long it took to make the uh, 2D. So that one took about um, three, two and a half minutes or so. And uh, that's not super slow. It's not super fast either. But anyways, let's see what it gave us. So whenever we make a 2D, it always ends up in our in our top view. So uh, let's see what's happening here. So you can see it landed in almost the same spot that uh, Kristen's uh, previous iteration did. Um, I'm just going to move it up here. Um, and I think that now we can see how much better it is to have these surfaces uh, blocking out all those lines instead of having to deal with the editing of this line work. Um, so here we do still have some cleanup to do, but it's going to be a lot easier than uh, it was before. So um, you would just use your the tools that you know already uh, to edit this. So I'm going to use trim and see if I can get rid of some of these um, objects. And if you're having issues like I am right now, um, try to explode things and you will see that it becomes a lot easier to get rid of those elements. I'm also going to ungroup it and see if that makes a difference. Yeah, so now I can go in and get rid of all those lines. You're going to have some places where there's um, broken lines. Um, things that, that don't really make sense. Honestly, at this stage, because we're just doing a pinup, I would not go through and make sure everything is perfect. Like, I am not going to go through and uh, double check every single intersecting line and see what's happening. I'm just going to take a look at it from this distance and say like, okay, here, maybe I want to fix this up. That's fine. I'll fix it up. 
Um, but if it goes beyond my ability to really like click a few times, I'm probably just going to ignore it. Um, so we're not, I'm not going to get into nitpicky details here or here. Leave those nitpicky details for later when it counts. Okay, now that that's done, I'm just going to get rid of this initial one here. Um, I want to show you guys uh, something that is really easy to do in Rhino, which is to create exploded axonometrics. Um, to create an exploded axonometric, there's a few different ways you could do it. Number one, you could select those surfaces or the, the layers that the trees are on, and you could just use the gumball to bring them up. So, but you're, you see that you're left with this pattern uh, of voids where those shapes used to be. So another method is to actually um, export or make 2D different items at different times. So if I go to my named view again, I can, um, I'm just going to make sure that everything is on the correct layer. So if you don't know how to select something, so I'm having trouble trying to find out where this layer is in my, in my palette, try going to the selection panel over here and then see what you can do. So I'm going to look for one that's a selection by block. Select all block instances. I'm going to try that one. It didn't work. So I'm going to see if there's anything else. Select surfaces. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So um, now it's selected all of the surfaces and I'm just going to make sure that I deselect all the other ones that I don't want selected in my view. So if I go ZSA, it should focus in on the selection that I have. So now I know I have all the trees uh, selected. I'm going to group them together. And then on this isometric view that I have, and now I can export these trees individually. So I could do a make 2D and I'm gonna call it sludge pattern one axo northeast trees. I'm gonna let Rhino do its magic and create the axonometric for that. Okay, I'll just check out what that uh, delivered in my um, top view. And I can see that now I have an axonometric of just the trees. So I'm going to leave that in place and go back to um, my view, which is this one. So now you can kind of understand why it's so um, great to have a saved view because you can go back and work with it without having to scroll in and out. Um, now I'm going to export this service, surface and all of the lines that, um, that were drawn here. So I'm going to select those as well. And now I'm going to make 2D again. This one should go a lot quicker. So I'm going to uh, give this one the um, name base. And that one should not take very much time at all. So I'm going to go check it out. And now I have an axonometric of my base. And um, just to be sure, I'm going to group that together. And then I have this axonometric of the trees over top. And I'm going to group those together. So now what I can do is if I want to create an exploded axonometric, I can take this group of trees and lift them up above so I have the base and I have the trees. Now I can see those patterns completely separately. So whereas in this one, uh, the trees are, on, are integrated with the line work, which can be useful. Um, in this version, you have the ability to explode things and pull them apart. So um, I just wanted to make you aware of those options for using Make2D and setting up axos so that you can separate out different elements. With this one too, um, I'm going to ungroup this for a second. You could even grab the base as a separate entity. Okay, so I have a base. This is my topography. I have a pattern. And then I have my trees. So you can understand how you can use isometric views in Rhino and the Make2D command to actually build up these complicated drawings pretty easily and pretty simply. Now, of course, if we're going to export this to scale, I hope that this process is going to sound very familiar to you, but we're going to select all of this line work and go File, Export Selected. And we are going to um, navigate to a folder. I'll select my Illustrator, Save. And then uh, these axos, 
I believe the studies uh, initially are just studies. So now you would have a file to work with. I would recommend that once you have, um, once you have generated a bunch of axonometric studies that you group them together and move them off to the side because Rhino is going to continue generating your axos in this, probably in the same area pretty much. So in order to keep everything organized, I would just kind of level it off with uh, the plan that you created and move the line work over to the side. Um, only do this once you are absolutely certain that you're finished generating line work, because if you go up back to your model and make another 2D object, it's going to come in here and you're going to have a hard time matching it up to um, all of this material.